I love the film look, like the actual look of physical motion picture film, whether that's Super 8, Super 16, Super 35, 65 millimeter, everything from the grain to the halation to the highlight roll off, the soft but detailed look of film to me is very pleasing. But would I ever shoot on film? No, probably not, at least not yet. It's expensive, it takes four and a half minutes to reload, and in general, it just looks much harder to work with. So I think I'm just gonna stick with digital cameras. But how do you recreate that film look on a digital image? In this video, we're gonna go over a plugin called Dehancer and whether or not we can even come close to recreating something similar to the film look. All right, now that we are in the computer, we're gonna take a look at a couple clips that I have already set up. These two clips are from my Canon C70 shot at C-Log2. And I've already transformed it from C-Log2 into Rec 709, so that all we need to do is now apply some of Dehancer's uh, LUTs and some of their uh, tools to see what Dehancer actually does. So I'm gonna first go ahead and go into the effects. Um, and I'm going to go all the way down here to Dehancer Pro 7.0, and I'm going to click and drag into my Dehancer node. So right away, you can tell that uh, it has already changed the image quite a bit. And in this video, there are a couple things that I'm going to be disabling just because we're not going to be really going over it because I don't really use them. Um, and the first one right here is going to be the input. So the input right now, the source is going to be Rec. 709 because the footage that's coming into Dehancer is Rec. 709. If it was anything else, for example, Rec. 2020, if my footage was uh, color graded in the color space of Rec. 2020, I'm going to go ahead and choose this option. But since I'm not, I'm going to be just going back to Rec. 709. There are some other options depending on where you are in the color grading process. So if I go to choose camera, you can actually select the exact camera, make and model and Dehancer will automatically transform your footage from whatever log footage you shot into Rec. 709 or whatever color space you're working with. So for example, I'm going to choose Canon and choose my C70 and make sure that it is log two cinema gamut selected. Obviously this is way overkill because I've already transformed it from C log two into Rec. 709. So this part is not very important. I'm gonna go back into Rec. 709 as my input. And I'm gonna close that tab. Film developer, I don't really use, I don't really need uh, for film. So what Dehancer does is it has a bunch of different film stocks that you can choose and make your footage look like those film stocks. So for example, you can turn your footage into Kodak Gold 200. There's also Portrait 400, which is very popular as well. They have Cinestill 800T, as well as all of the Vision 3 film stocks. Now for this video, I'm not going to use the film stocks here. So I'm going to disable this and also making sure that expand is disabled as well. And down here, print, this is something that I will actually be using. Print film LUTs are something that I use in pretty much all of my videos for clients and also for YouTube. Now DaVinci Resolve actually has their own print film LUTs and I can show you right now. If you go to LUTs right here, and I go to film looks, you can actually find the Fujifilm and the Kodak 2383 LUTs. These are the print film emulations that I like to use, but they are built right into Dehancer. So I'm gonna go to my profile, go from linear and select the Kodak 2383 print film LUT. And that applies a LUT to my footage. And just like any other tool, you have a lot of parameters where you can change the values of and tweak the settings to your liking. So I'm not gonna touch any parameters. I think I like the uh, LUT as it is. Um, nothing in color head. I don't have this enabled, so I'm gonna close that up. Now underneath print, there are a couple other tools that are definitely worth going over because that really contributes heavily to the film look. The first one is gonna be film grain. The next one is halation. There's also bloom, film damage, film breathe, and also lastly, gate weave. And we'll be going over each of these separately. But first up is gonna be the film grain. Now film grain, in my opinion, Dehancer does the best out of any of those uh, film grain overlays that you find online. And that is because there are two different ways of doing film grain. On the Dehancer website, they go over two different ways of obtaining grain. The first way is natural grain scan from real footage shot on grain, which basically means that you're shooting with eight or 16 or 35 millimeter film, and then you're shooting it into an 18% gray card. Now that is the first way. The second way is gonna be a procedural, which means a computer generated version of grain. They use a mathematical 3D model that allows them to generate a flexibly controlled 
analog procedural grain. Now, if we go back to Dehancer and look at the film grain tool, you can see that they have different tool profiles. This is new in Dehancer Pro 7.0. It makes it a lot quicker and easier to select the different types of film grain according to different types of film stock. There's also a custom mode where you can change a bunch of different parameters according to how you want the grain to look like. For me, I'm gonna go and choose 35 millimeter at ISO 250. I'm gonna go ahead and play through the footage really quick and I can zoom zoom in and we can just check out what the grain is doing. Now I'm going to pause it right here. And if I go ahead and play around with the exposure of my footage, I'm going to just drag the overall global exposure. And you can tell that the grain is actually looks like it's moving and it's actually changing with the footage according to the brightness values, color also affects the grain as if the grain is alive and also interacting with the footage itself. Now, this is something that only a computer generated version of grain will do. An overlaid version of film grain is not going to interact with your footage in this way. And I'll show you right now by going over and looking at DaVinci's version of film grain. Click and drag. And now I'm gonna choose something with big grain so you can actually see what I'm talking about. I'm going to choose eight millimeter at 200 T. I'm going to zoom in to the footage right now, and I'm going to play around with the settings. I'm going to lower the brightness of my footage. If you look on the wall right there, as I'm sliding the texture slider, the grain is zooming in and zooming out. And this is what I mean when I say overlaid grain doesn't really interact with your footage the same way that computer generated grain does. Now, if we go back to the dehancer version, notice that it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's zooming in and out of my image. It actually stays the same. It's just, there's just more of it or less of it. And if you really zoom in, you can check out these little individual clusters of dark film grain because in actual film stock, the silver halides, they do and will group up together and bunch up to create these darker little spots. And for me, Dehancer creates a much more believable version of film grain. It looks like it's actually a part of your image and it's actually interacting with how bright or how dark your footage looks as opposed to something that's just like put on top and really doesn't contribute anything to your image. And for me personally, just based on that film grain tool, it's 100% worth it to get Dehancer, but let's also quickly go through some of the other tools. So now I'm going to disable the film grain so that we can actually take a look at the next one, which is Halation. Now Halation creates this red orange tinge to your overblown or the overexposed parts of your image. For example, right here on the metal wiring right here, you can tell that there's this uh, red tinge or orange glow around the wiring. And that's something that you definitely will see in actual film. And just like the film grain, you have a bunch of different tool profiles that are already set up for you, but you can also go into the custom mode and just play around with the different settings according to you know your taste. For me, I'm gonna choose 35 millimeter slash super 35. I'm gonna turn it off and then on and you can really see what it's doing to the whole footage. Now DaVinci Resolve also has their own version of Halation and you can tell that it is kind of doing the same thing. You can play around with the threshold and all these different settings uh, in the DaVinci tool as well. However, the only issue is that they don't have a preset of like 35 millimeter film, 65 millimeter film in Dehancer. You can go into the different tool profiles and choose eight millimeter, 16, 35 or 65 millimeter for your Halation. And that just makes it a lot faster and more efficient. Now, Halation is pretty straightforward, so we're gonna move on to the next one, which is Bloom. And for that, we're going to go into the next clip that we have here, and we're gonna go ahead and enable the Bloom. And you can tell that if I disable and re-enable the Bloom, you can tell what it's doing to the whole footage. And you can see that it's giving a nice glow to the whole uh, image, especially around these overblown parts um, of the uh, image, like my hand right here. And film naturally has that glowing effect to the whole image, especially when you go down down to something like Super 8, um, you can definitely tell that it is uh, much more apparent than something like 65 millimeter. I'm gonna stick with 35 millimeter and we're gonna go over and look at DaVinci's version of the glow. It's not really the same thing as Dehancer's. So we're gonna take a look at that right now. And you can tell that it's not really the same uh, type of uh, bloom or glowing effect that we see in Dehancer. I'm gonna play around with the settings to make sure that this lamp right here is not super blown out because right now it's completely like gone. So this is good right here and the spread right now looks good. And I'm gonna do a before and after. This is off 
and on. And so right now what I'll do is grab a still of the DaVinci version of the Bloom so that we can see the differences between the two. Okay, so right now on the left here, we have the DaVinci version. On the right here is gonna be the Dehancer version. And you can tell right here on the hand right now, this is the uh, Dehancer version is on the right, DaVinci is on the left, and you can just look at the haloing effect on my arm. And for me personally, I like the Dehancer version of the bloom or the glow effect because to me, it matches a lot closer to what actual film looks like. And I'm sure in the DaVinci version of the glow, you can probably play around with the settings to closely match uh, what film stock looks like. But again, in Dehancer, you have all of these different presets for you already laid out. And it's so easy to just switch and apply the effect, the bloom that you are looking for. So the last three tools right here are gonna be film damage, film breathe, and gate weave. So I'm gonna enable film damage. And if I zoom in and play through the footage, you can see all these like little specks, these dust, the hairs, all these scratches that are a part of actual film uh, when they scan it. And if you go into the customize mode, you can play around with all these different settings and really create a custom look um, for the film damage. Now, this is a new tool that they've added into Dehancer Pro 7.0. The earlier versions do not have this film damage tool. So that tool is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna disable it and enable film breathe and play through the footage right now to see what it's actually doing. So you can tell right here, the exposure of the uh, edges of the frame are changing. And if we go back to the Dehancer website, film breathing is a noticeable accidental change in exposure, contrast, and color caused by uneven emotion coding and the instability of the camera shutter and also different deviations in the film. Now, this is something that's not as common, but nonetheless, it does give you a lot of character to your film. Now, the last tool that we're gonna look at is gonna be gate weave. And if I enable it, you can actually see that it zooms slightly into the footage. And if I play through it, you can see that the footage is slightly moving a little bit and it's much more apparent at the eight millimeter uh, super eight millimeter setting. And if we go back to the website, gate weave refers to the mechanical swinging of a film strip while it is being pulled through a film window in the film camera, projector, or video coding device. And it's that unevenness of the film that's causing this zooming and moving effect of the image. Now, again, this is not as common in modern day film scans, but this is something definitely that creates a lot more character to your films. So that's the last tool that I wanna go over. And if we go back to the Dehancer website, Dehancer isn't just for DaVinci Resolve, they also have it for Adobe After Effects, Premiere, and also Final Cut Pro. The version that I'm using is the Dehancer Pro. If you want to, you can get a free trial from their website and you can trial any one of the different uh, plugins. Almost all of the Dehancer products don't work off of a subscription-based model. They actually have you pay a one-time fee and then you get it for however long you pay for. However, if the lifetime license is too expensive for you, they have other cheaper options. They can also break down the different plugins to smaller different packages. For example, if you just want the Dehancer Grain, you can get that separately as well. And if you use the code AlexChung10, you can get 10% off pretty much any of these plugins. Again, if you're not sure if Dehancer is right for you, go ahead and download the free trial and play around with the different tools that they have. That's it for this video. If you like it, hit that like button and make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. Until the next one, my name is Alex Chung and I'll see you later. Bye.